<coughs> Hello, dear fellows. Welcome to another episode of Heavy Talk. Hello, dear fellows. Welcome to another episode of Heavy Talk. <laughs> Hello, dear fellows. I'm Rudy Messiah. Welcome to another episode of Heavy Talk. In this episode, I want to talk about the most overlooked Metallica songs with emphasizing that there are no overlooked Metallica songs in general. Okay, there are a few here and there, but in the last 10 years, because they are professionals and they listen to their fans, there was a lot of people voted during that last song. They started playing the songs that they never played live. The song that we never wanted to play live ever is now on the set list. So if I mention a song, don't come saying, nah, <laughs> they played it live. That's not what I'm talking about. They played most of the songs live again. Okay. When I said overlooked, I meant the songs that I wish they play more live. The songs that I wish they get appreciated more in the metal media, in the metal world and outside of the metal world. So let's get into this. My first choice is The Frayed Ends of Sanity. I mean, this song has so much power that you feel the adrenaline is going to explode in your head from the intro to James' vocals to the bridge. And then there's the lyrics. I mean, the lyrics of this song, obviously, it's about somebody who has mental problems. And there are certain lines in that lyrics with the power of James that makes you inside of that man's head. I mean, when he says, fighting the fear of fear, it could sound like a filler sentence, but it's not. If you remember yourself passing through these kind of feelings many times, there is something you fear about, you fear of, and suddenly you remember you are not obsessing about this thing that makes you uncomfortable. And then you start fearing that the fear of that thing will come back to you. Why I haven't thought about that thing? And here comes the fear of fear, the fear of diving back into the feelings that in that particular moment, you're not feeling those feelings. How many of us have felt that before? And how confusing could that be? Growing conspiracy. Everyone is after me. Or somebody who is paranoid. And the most, I think Justice For All is lyrically is the greatest Metallica album. The second song will be The House Jack Built. Honestly, Lord album got Metallica so much hate. They cut their hair, they changed their style, they sold out, blah, blah, blah. But even after all these years, I really don't like too many songs in this album. Some songs, they do feel boring. And just writing songs and stuff, it's a lot more fun to go exploring elsewhere because we've already been there, but yeah. it doesn't mean we don't like that. Yeah. It's yeah. just, a, why repeat ourselves? That Blues influence on some of the songs, you know, as well as like a country influence. And I always would like to listen to a song without prejudgment of who is giving me that song, of who is performing that song. Because some songs are great, but they don't sound like Metallica. Okay, is it, if we forget this is Metallica, is this song a good song? That is the real question. And that is how you measure if this is a good song or not, regardless of the image that you accept Metallica in or not. This song doesn't sound like Metallica. And they don't play it live, maybe because it's a shitty song, but most probably because it's a slow song and it's very slow tempo. At the same time, it's not a ballad. So why would they play it? This song is unique with the vocoder that uh, uh, Hamid uh, did. It's heavy. It's doomy. I, I, I like this song very much. I wish they play it live. I wish it gets more appreciated. Third song is where wild things are this is an amazing song i really like many songs in reload and i think reload is much better than load 
But still, not my favorite album, of course. But where Wild Things Are, this chromatic flow of the notes in the first clean part. Pum, 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 pum. The brilliance of this riff to this song, it has this Disney mystery feeling. You know, in Disney movies, how they put the music, of course, in different instruments. But because Where Wild Things Are, it's a book for children. So the brilliance of this, this is a very dark song. I don't see it about the book, but I think is that Jane is putting here his projections of real soldiers on this childish story because at the end toy soldiers of two war i mean isn't all soldiers are toys they get orders to go go die go kill you know so this is this little child who is 17 taken to the end of the world to kill people he never knew taking orders from somebody who doesn't care and he never met this melodic theme with the children book with the uh, projection on real soldiers and real war is just brilliant the fourth song is of course everyone agrees with me dyer's eve this song <laughs> who didn't feel attachment to this song when they were teenagers the ones who listen to it and they feel no attachment to it i envy them that means they've been teenagers in a very calm environment and very healthy environment. This is an extremely heavy song. I've read Lars saying that their management think that this song is too heavy and problems are coming, but we like it. That's what Lars said. Dyer's Eve, this is the night you die, or this is the night before the day you die. And the song ends pop. It's like somebody put a bullet to their head. And it's the last song in the album. So the album finished with the kid dying or the kid killing himself. It, it's a very heavy song. It's problematic somehow, but it's very realistic. That's the most important thing. I mean, heavy metal gets so much hate for, you know, uh, 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 talking about suicide, dealing with suicide in lyrics and stuff or other things. At the end, there are real things that happens in the world and there are real feelings that millions of people feel around the world as long as the song is realistic that means it's a great song the other song will be damage damage is the heaviest metallica song The riffs are like nuclear bombs destroying the planet. I mean, this song is so heavy. I know they played it live several times. And when I was a kid, this Ebo bass, I didn't understand what is that. And maybe nobody liked the intro of Damage, but I do like it. I think it's, it gives you images. Uh, distant apocalyptic city, I don't know what. I'm gonna see them at Hellfest. I wish they played this song. The other song, like Dyer's Eve, is The God That Failed. And during university, uh, I used to play with a cover band and we used to cover this song. This song is very heavy. It is problematic in its own way. But when you know the backstory of this song, you understand how great the lyrics and the music with that lyrics, how it goes it slows down and goes up and goes down and uh, it's a great song and the fact there are people in the world who think they should not take medicine because it's God's will that they have a certain disease and they don't let their children to be in the biology class you don't need to know about it because you're never going to the doctor and you don't you know God will fix whatever ails you and so I'd have to get up and leave class and you know I was just, you know whisperings you know what's 
how come you leave every time? And then I have to go into this whole explanation about the religion and... Some people say you have to respect all beliefs. No, I don't have to respect all beliefs. I think this is ridiculous and this is baffling <laughs> that there are people who actually believe that. So no wonder that the man behind the music had so much troubles in his life, alcoholism, and he went through rehab. This all has to do with this. And it's sad, but at least uh, we ended up with a great song. Not worth it, but great song. No remorse. No this is a great song. I don't know if Mustaine had to do with this song also, but the riffs, the energy, uh, it sounds so much like Diamond Head, but of course, to the next level. This is my favorite song in Kill Em All, actually. Another song is Trapped Under the Ice. They played it live several times. And I think Trapped Under the Ice is the no remorse of Ride the Lightning. It's fast, it's heavy, it's somehow could be scary, but it's not like Fight Fire with Fire or The Four Horsemen. It's not played as much as these songs. And I love the chorus of this song especially when James was younger and his his scream and his James Hetfield way it's great another song is please don't hate me low man's lyrics it's a ballad that doesn't sound like Metallica at all honestly I love this song it's linked to memories, to certain memories in my life. I was 19 and I used to play with a band. We played this song. Uh, the feeling behind it, the instruments, the vibrato on the guitar, and it really touches emotion. I've said it doesn't sound like Metallica, but honestly, it sounds like James as an individual, you know? Number 10, the last song that came to my mind is The Shortest Straw. So there are three songs from Injustice for All. We can count Eye of the Beholder also. But The Shortest Straw, I think, is a better song. That's how I view this song, like a George Orwell uh, 1984 song. It's a great song, great riffs. When I was young, when I first heard Justice for All, that was my favorite song on the album. I used to listen to it like a zillion times. In my opinion, these are the 10 songs that should be taken care of more in the Metallica journey. Of course, I didn't uh, choose any song from uh, uh, Death Magnetic because honestly, the good song on this album, they play it live already, like My Apocalypse. It's a great song and they play it live always. It's not overlooked. Also, I didn't choose anything from Saint Anger. Also, because the two good songs on this album, they, they play them live. Saint Anger has great riffs. The misunderstood album, yeah. But in my opinion, if we put the snare sound aside, in my opinion, the songs are even overcooked or undercooked. There's even something missing in the song or the song is too long for no reason. M many songs on Saint Anger, they start, wow, this song is great. After 90 minutes, you feel, okay, okay, thanks. In my opinion, Metallica and the 72 seasons, they didn't return to kill them all. They returned to the roots because the album sounds very much, many of the songs sounds exactly like the new wave of British heavy metal, but in a modern production. Really indicative of new wave of British metal stuff. So kind of a hearkening back to 80s kind of riff. Thank you fellows for staying with me in this episode of Heavy Talk. Please share with me in the comments what do you think about what I said. See you again. Fuck. Fuck.